Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to my uh, course on developing soft skills and personality. Uh, this is NPTEL MOOC course from IIT Kanpur. I am Ravichandran giving you this course. We are on fourth week of uh, this course, module number 2, lecture number 20. Now this week the focus is on communication and how soft skills are related to communication. In that sense, we started discussing about listening as a very integral part of communication and soft skills. In the last lecture, we looked at listening as an integral part of communication. While talking about that as an integral part of communication along with reading, speaking and writing, I also cleared you some misconceptions about listening. Uh, for instance, people have the misconception that to be a good speaker, you do not have to be a listener at all. That is a gross misconception which I cleared it. And there are other such misconceptions like only speaking consumes energy, not listening. Because people think that listening is a passive activity and then it does not consume any energy at all. And then we focused on the difference between hearing and listening. So, hearing as you might have understood that is basically a physical activity and then it does not involve any conscious mind process. So, it can be even unconscious and it does not disturb our any other activity. While listening is a mental activity that involves reception, selection, organization, assimilation, interpretation, evaluation and response. The first step to become a good listener I said is to keep in one's mind a very open uh, framework. I simply said keep your mind open and towards the conclusion I said that keep it free from any kind of prejudice. I gave the story of uh, Beethoven to illustrate how a doctor could have actually went for abortion and actually would have killed a genius if uh, the concerned people were not really open minded and did not listen to people without any prejudice. So, keeping this in mind that your mind should be open and then it should not have any kind of prejudice. Let us move ahead and look more on effective communication. There are some interesting facts about effective communication that is correlated with improving your listening skills as well as you becoming an active listener. This module particularly in this lecture, I am just going to focus or I am just going to make you become an active listener. So, I will tell you more about this. Overall, if you look at effective communication, there are some startling facts about uh, uh, this communication factor that is coming from various researches. So, one research indicates that about 60 percent of listening is involved in effective communication. This means ineffective communication, a communication that is effective, successful, meaningful, fruitful, 60 percent, the major part is actually listening and not speaking. Okay. People think that it is rather speaking that plays a predominant role, but it is the other way around. Now, this is effective communication. Ineffective communication, you can understand the listening component becomes lesser and lesser, could be 30 percent, 20 percent, 10 percent and even 0, no listening at all. So, there are people who uh, try to give you an impression that they are listening to you, but actually they do not listen to you at all. So, that uh, actually amounts to ineffective communication. What is the other interesting factor about effective communication and where listening is involved. Another research shows that only 25 percent of our listening capacity is used by us. This is a startling factor because when 60 percent of listening is involved in terms of effective communication, 
most of the times we do not use 100 percent of our listening capacity and we are under using our listening capacity only about 20 percent of it we have been using. Now, this should alert you, this should uh, give you a kind of self awareness and then you should keep asking am I doing this, am I all the time not utilizing my listening and am I all the time maximizing my talking and minimizing my listening. Keep asking and then try to maximize your listening part in any effective communication. The other interesting fact that has been told to us uh, based on our research is that people do not remember 50 percent of what they heard just within a gap of 8 hours. This means if you hear something even right now in about 8 hours you are about to remember only 50 percent of it. Now, how do you remember it 100 percent? So, there are ways which come under skills which we talk in terms of active listening. One of the most important trait to become an active listener and then to uh, remember things 100 percent is to make use of notes. So, even when you are listening to somebody just before you in a kind of face to face conversation, if it is an important talk there is no harm in keeping a small paper, small notepad and then you just take notes about important words, key words and phrases, you will be able to remember almost 90 percent if not 100 percent. So, these three facts that uh, only 60 percent of uh, uh, listening is there in terms of effective communication whereas, 25 percent of listening capacity is only used by us despite the fact that 60 percent is required in any effective communication and that we generally remember only half of what we heard that is after a gap of 8 hours should be uh, things that alert you and should uh, try to make you a, a person who is interested in active uh, communication, active listening. Good communication in general itself is about good listening. One of the major skills in effective communication is the ability to listen well. Listening as such is the receiving part of communication. In the lectures to come, I will talk to you about communication process in which there is this sender and the receiver. The sender you can assume is the speaker, currently I am sending you something, but then the receiver is the one who receives it by listening. It is receiving information through your ears and eyes that is real good listening. And good listening is an active integrated communication skill that demands energy and know-how. It is purposeful, powerful and productive. What are the traits of a good communicator? If you could say uh, somebody is a good communicator, what do you look at that person? A good communicator is essentially a good listener. Whomer we call as a good communicator is actually a person who is very kind to listen to us. She modulates various verbal, nonverbal symbols. She displays depending on the feedback she gathers through simultaneous listening. A good communicator not only pays attention to the other person's words, but also to his tone and facial expressions and body language. In short, a good communicator is very receptive and perceptive to not only the verbal part of communication, but also the nonverbal part of communication and adapts adjust and responds to the cues that the uh, speaker is giving and the other communicator is involved in listening. Now, the major concept of this lecture is about active listening and to make you uh, develop your skills towards becoming an active listener. What is active listening? How is it different from just listening? Now, active listening is whole body listening. When you listen, you have put your entire mind, body, emotion, mental uh, involvement, everything is there. The person is full of eyes and ears. What are the eyes doing? The eyes are focused on the person talking. The eyes are maintaining eye contact with the person, giving the person a feeling that I am following you, I am looking at you, I am just uh, listening to you and I am willing to respond to you. 
The eyes look for body language also that is non-verbal communication to correlate with verbal meaning. What are the ears doing? The ears listen carefully, it gives utmost care and what about the brain? The brain is receptive fully and reflects on what is being said, it is receiving and then it is reflecting, it is thinking, assimilating over ideas, but it is not reacting, it is not doing anything to stop the other person. Why? Because the mouth is shut. For an active listener, the lips remain closed most of the times, except there are occasions such as seeking clarifications, otherwise the mouth is shut. The hands and feet are still, so either they are closed or they are just resting on the lap, they are crossed and then they are resting. The feet is not shaking, it is not moving, they are just still, they are at rest which means the hands or the feet are not in any way distracting the speaker's attention. What about the heart? The heart is feeling compassionate. The whole body is naturally inclined toward the speaker to show interest and empathy. So, this means the body itself is slightly inclined leaning towards the other person to show that I am actually interested in your talk and I am very empathetic in listening to you. The speaker gets a feeling that she is given a careful, thoughtful attention and consideration. The speaker feels comfortable because the speaker gets an idea that the other listener, you as an active listener is giving a very careful, thoughtful attention and consideration to what the speaker is telling you. How to become an active listener? Some of the most important points, if you could keep in mind and then rehearse it in your mind whenever you are involved in a conversation and try to follow it, it will make you an active listener sooner or later. What are the key points in making you an active listener? First, be courteous and considerate. Be courteous and considerate. This means be very pleasing be very pleasant when the other person is talking to you and considerate. Sometimes a person may come and tell a story that is very tragic and the person may be telling you in a very sobbing manner. So, be considerate, be kind. So, uh, do not respond in a manner that the other person feels uncom uncomfortable. Generally, it is said that you should treat the speaker like your favorite guest at home. So, somebody who is so uh, friendly or to whom you are very fond of, that person is at your home and then the way you would like to talk to the person is the way you should try to talk to anybody who is coming in contact with you for a conversation. Pay full attention, concentrate and eliminate all distractions. If you are in the class, this is much more important, pay full attention to what the teacher is telling you. Concentrate on the topics which are being discussed. Eliminate all distractions. So, somebody is passing by on the corridor, so do not look at the person. This side a beautiful bird is coming and sitting on a tree and chirping. So, do not be tempted to look at the bird. Pay full attention, completely concentrate on the thoughts which are being delivered to you, the ideas which are being communicated to you and eliminate all distractions which are environmental, which are sometimes created by you. For example, your phone, when somebody is talking to you, you have left your phone not in switched off mode, not even in silent mode. So, what happens? The phone rings and then it disturbs the thought flow of the other person. So, you and then uh, in a very impolite manner you just take it and then talk to the person on phone. The other person is completely put off and then not in a mood to continue with the discussion. And then you put the phone and then you say that, oh, I am sorry, you just continue. Other person says, it is ok and then you say, that, oh, no, you are saying something. The other person again says, oh, I, I just forgot. So, 
Eliminate this kind of unnecessary distraction, remove the phone, put it in silent mode and any kind of distraction, suppose it is coming from TV or music. So, try to go to a place where you can avoid all these things. And when you are involved in the communication process, do not interrupt. When the person is telling you something, do not interrupt. Allow the person to complete whatever the other person wants to tell you. And as I said before, in order not to forget what the person tells you and remember 100 percent of what the other person is telling you, note down important points. The way you want it, use abbreviations, use short forms of words, use phrases. You do not have to uh, write the complete sentence, but the way you would like to remember it. Some people even use a kind of flow chart to listen to the entire conversation again. They can recreate the entire talk just by noting down in the form of a flow chart. So, whatever manner you want, you note down important points, but try to recollect by looking at the important points. And then reflect back. When uh, somebody is talking to you for a long time, let us say it is a narration of a personal incident that happened to the other person or the person is trying to explain some difficult concept to you, reflect back, think over, roll back in your mind and then tell the other person how much are you following this. Rephrase, tell it in a different manner, restate in your own words. Try to ensure the other person that by doing this, you have correctly understood what the other person is telling you, that you are following the person closely. So, that is what is meant by reflecting back. You try to rephrase what the person is saying, so that the other person understands that, okay, uh, he or she is following me. And while doing this, minimize self-talk. Avoid talk as much as possible, minimize it, do not uh, talk about yourself, do not add any points which are not relevant to the conversation, which is uh, considered to be interesting for you, but do not do it at your side. Stay focused all the time, just be attentive to the person only, uh, keep your eyes, the entire body focused to the person and keep asking questions. Uh, especially to encourage the person or to seek clarifications, you can ask some questions. But never laugh, even, even if uh, the person is making a mistake. You can laugh if the person is in a good mood to make you laugh by telling a joke, but never laugh in a negative sense. The person commits a mistake, there is a slip or uh, uh, the person makes something wrong and then immediately it evokes laughter in you, never laugh or the person is saying something which in your opinion is very low to your uh, level of thinking. So, do not give a condescending or sarcastic smile, okay. that will actually put off the other person, the other person can also feel humiliated and stop the conversation. But on the other hand, try to encourage how can you encourage? You can do that both by verbal and non-verbal communication. The non-verbal communication you can encourage very powerfully by nodding. So, when somebody is uh, particularly the teacher is talking to you, keep nodding. So, that makes the teacher know that okay, you are actively listening to the person. Smile if the person is known to you and a friend. Lean forward, so indicating that you are interested. Look into the eyes of the speaker. Now, if it is an informal one, if you are the boss or if you are the senior person and if you are in the level slightly higher in terms of power relationship, you can even pat on the shoulder or if it is like uh, between two close people, even you can give a hug just to make the other person feel comfortable. You can just in between when you do that, the other person feels encouraged to talk, the other person feels the warmth in you. Verbally you can say, while talking you can say, oh that is good, sounds wonderful, damn interesting, keep going. So, these are phrases that will make the other person feel encouraged. At the same time, try to acknowledge efforts. 
if the person is telling you that he or she did something remarkable, acknowledge it then and there. Okay. And in fact, you ask more questions, so that they can talk more about what they have done. Questions like, how did you manage it? Wow, was not that wonderful? How could you do that? That was a wonderful idea, that was a terrific thing to do, that was a splendid job, great work. You are a genius to have done it. Now, acknowledging efforts again will make the person to come out and then tell you more about what the person has achieved or what the person has done. Use silence. Many people think that you should, as I said, keep talking or do something as an active listener, but silence is one of the most powerful weapons that an active listener can use. Use silence in a very effective manner, because silence can be kept in such a manner, the customer, if you are the business person or the client, if you are a lawyer or somebody or a student, if you are the teacher can actually open up. So, the person has come and if you keep all the talking and even if you talk to the other person as if you know whatever the other person has in his mind. So, the other person will not open up. So, use silence, in a sense use silence as a kind of comforting calmness. You are calm, but warm in your gesture, in your behavior you show the warmth, but not silent in a cold sense, not silent, but cold, but calm, but warm. So, that will make you every person come to you and then share their opinion. You can also after some time when the conversation is getting prolonged for a long time, you can summarize briefly whatever the person is telling and that will also indicate that you are showing some concern and then you are letting the person feel encouraged and continue. Do not hesitate to seek clarifications, especially when you do not understand what the other person is saying. Feel free to ask questions like, what do you mean to say? Could you please make this point clear to me? I am sorry, I am not able to follow from this point when you said this. Could you please uh, re-explain or tell me again in a uh, different manner? Could you give me a different illustrative example, so that I can understand? Okay. Now, these are things that will make the other speaker open to you, come out with lot of uh, uh, thoughts and ideas, which you would not have actually extracted from the other person, if you did not use some of these active listening techniques. Now, last but not the least, many people miss out the concluding part. In my opinion, that is the most important thing when you are going to conclude a conversation. Do not run, do not rush, do not show them that you just listen because the other person forced and talked to you. Give enough time, fix an appointment and then if you are busy, do not give an appointment. But if you are free, give them the time and then let the person speak and give them enough time. At the end of it, conclude by thanking the speaker and showing your appreciation. You can say things like, nice talking to you, wonderful listening to you, I greatly appreciate the time you gave me. Now, this again makes the person feel that it was such a nice thing that the person came, met you and talked to you. So, always make the speaker leave with a good feeling. So, the speaker should not go with a sense of regret. Why did I come and talk to this person? All the time he is talking and then he is not letting me come out with my ideas, he is bombarding with his own ideas. And last but not the least, if a person who is very dejected comes to you, somewhat discouraged and then disappointed, leave the dejected one with some hope. The person who comes to you when the person leaves should be different from the one who came to you for a talk. If you follow all these ones, you will become an active listener, you will eventually become a very effective communicator and you will be much soft out after in the company that is around you and you will be a very uh, 
very highly demandable employee in the circle of employers also. So, they are looking for people like you. So, develop this skill active listening. As I try to conclude this, I just want you to think over this small quote. When you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. When you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. So, keep this as your mantra, speak less, listen more, listen more. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you.